In a position of reception, say, Lord, we receive everything that you have for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever God has planned for me, give it here. Amen. Hallelujah. I want all of God's blessing. And uh, he has been so good to us. All right. I um, want to invite the entire Key Church, if you are available. I know it's during today. Uh, if you are available, I want you to come out and to celebrate uh, Brother Shelby Dancer. He served us so well, and uh, we will have his homegoing celebration this Friday, January the 22nd, right here at the church at 11 o'clock a.m. So if you are available and you want to come and uh, celebrate this man of God who served his church and served God and his family so faithfully, I think it's a life that's uh, worth honoring. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand. Clap of praise for him again. Remember to continue to pray for his wife, Joanne, this week. And uh, it's always difficult when you love a, uh, lose a loved one. Well, he's not lost. We know where he is. Uh, when they transition, because uh, you are just finding out, you are in the process of, of grieving, and then you have to make all of the preparations, and it's very, very difficult. So just make sure you pray for his wife and his family on this week. Uh, but again, if you want to celebrate him, the funeral will be here at the church at 11 o'clock a.m. this Friday, January the 22nd. Amen. God is good. All right. God has a word for us on today, and uh, it's going to come from the book of Deuteronomy, and it will be chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Whether you're worshiping with us on campus or online, we stand for the reading of God's holy word because it is a living word. We stand in honor and reverence to it. So please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to deal with verses 1 through 14 before your initial reading. Uh, we'll deal with verses 1 and 2. All right, if you have found it, say amen. amen. And if you're still looking, say wait one minute. All right, man, y'all doing good in 2021. Getting there quick, amen. Uh, took your pastor's advice, learned those books of the Bible, amen. All right, God is good. It'll change your life. They will change your life. All right, the word of the Lord reads, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. What an awesome God uh, that we serve. And for a little while, I'd like to share with you from this idea, getting it done in 2021. Getting it done in 2021. In this passage, Moses is sharing with the nation of Israel how they should act after they have entered into the promised land. And what he shares with them of first importance is that they, once they get in, they must remember that they are in a covenant with the Lord. Amen. Now, I've shared this with you before, but a covenant is different than a contract. So a contract we don't have a contract with God. We have a covenant with God. Anybody glad to be in covenant with God? And uh, just to go a little bit farther to make sure that you understand, uh, they had a mosaic covenant with God. But watch this. But we, come on, somebody, we are in a new covenant with God. Our covenant with God is based on his relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. Now. The difference between a covenant and a contract is that you get a contract because you don't trust the other party to do what they said they're going to do in this exchange. 
So you want to get your house painted, the painter comes, and y'all sign a contract. And then if you're really wise, you go get it notarized. And the reason that you get the contract is that you don't trust him to do the work that he promised. And he wants a contract as well because he doesn't trust you to pay him after he does the work. Can I get amen? But the contract is based on mistrust or distrust because the, both parties really don't trust each other. Now, the difference with the new covenant that we're under is that it is based on trust. So because God the Father was fully faithful and trustworthy and because God the Son is truly faithful and trustworthy, then our covenant is always binding because neither one of them will let their side down. And the way that we enter into the covenant, since it's a covenant of faith, we enter into the covenant through our faith in Jesus Christ. When we put faith in him, now we enter into a new covenant with the Father. Anybody in here thankful to be in a covenant with our Father through our big brother, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, with Israel's covenant, this was the covenant. The covenant was that they would obey God and serve God and that God would bless them. And the challenge with Israel, we know historically, is that God always held up his end of the covenant, but because of their disobedience, they weren't able to hold up their end of the covenant. But as now God had promised them that he would give them this new promised land, and Moses is preparing them before they go in, that when you get in, don't forget the covenant. In other words, don't get so excited about getting the blessing that God promised you that you forget who you are and you forget whose you are and you forget the commitment that you have for God. Don't, after God blesses you, after God blows you up, after things start working, after you get that degree, after you get the house, after you get that new neighborhood, if you get the car that you always wanted, don't lose your mind. Don't start tripping now. Don't forget that is, come on somebody, watch this, watch this. Um, after you get that governmental position that you always wanted, don't forget who's the one that brought you there. Don't get so sidetracked with politics that you put God to the side and prioritize politics over the guy that put you in a political position. Oh, y'all, y'all not ready. Um, anybody here know that you're blessed because God blessed you? I know you're hard workers. Come on, somebody. But you didn't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. That's not why you're so blessed. God gave you the boot and he gave you the straps. Can I get an amen? You're here because God has blessed you. But now that you're blessed, don't get beside yourself and start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to remember your covenant with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, during <clears throat> the difficulty of 2020, and I think all of us can attest to the fact that 2020 has been a challenge. Can I get amen, anybody? Has 2020 been a challenge for you? 2020 been a challenge? All of us can um, realize that 2020 has been a challenge, but even in the midst of all of that challenge, God has been faithful to us who've chosen to believe. Uh, anybody know I'm right about it? Watch this. Uh, he's been faithful to us individually, but he's been faithful to us corporately. Now, corporately here at the Key Church, even through all of the challenges of 2020, with COVID-19, social injustice, racism, all this stuff going on, God still continued to bless us and brought us into the land and the building that he promised to give us many, many years ago. Anybody know I'm right about it? And what he's saying is that, watch this, it's taken eight years to get to the promise. But he's saying, and even in 2020, he's proven through difficult times, he can still fulfill his promise even in difficult times. Come on, somebody. But what he's saying is that in 2020, he got us here. Now in 2021, it's time now, because we've been focused on getting here so long. Come on, come on. We've been focused on just getting somewhere to stay, getting, a, getting us a place. Come on, somebody, getting our own house. But he said, now that you're blessed and now I've given you the house, even in the difficulty of 2020, 
Don't get beside yourself. The first thing you need to do is remember that you're in covenant with me. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Now, there are blessings that come from obeying God, and this is, this is the covenant, and there are curses that come from disobeying God. And uh, we need to understand that. We need to refocus. Now, if COVID-19, it's been difficult, but one of the things that it has done for all of us, I guarantee you, it, is, it has caused us to refocus. Anybody know I'm right about it? It has caused you to set your priorities straight. It's caused you to realize that life is temporary and life is short. And I don't know how much time I have on earth, but I need to be more serious about doing what the Lord, Lord has called us to do. Now, God blessed us with this property. He fulfilled that vision in 2020, and he's saying that in 2021, it's time to get it done in 2021. In other words, we spent so much time getting here but now that we're here, it's time to focus on being who God has called us to be and doing what God has called us to do. We have to have faith in the vision that God has given us. Watch this. And accept the greatness that he has decided to give us. All right. I had two people to clap. All right. Y'all scared of that? Y'all scared of that? Y'all scared? All right. Because, because watch this. It's real. It's real. Because with to whom much is given, much is required. With great blessing and great growth will come great responsibility. And a lot of times we don't want that responsibility. But what God is saying, he's already prepared us for this and he's called us to this. He's been getting us ready to get ready for this. But now we're here, so now it's time to get it done in 2021. It's time to get it done. Now, we, we still have some challenges, but we're not going to let those challenges sidetrack us. Matter of fact, they are more incentive for us to focus on doing what God has called us to do. It's time to turn up, time to get focused in 2021. Anybody with me? If you're with me, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what is the vision that he has given us as a church? Um, that we need to focus on in 2021. He's given us the focus of leading lost people to him. And I, I know that these times have proven that there's a lot of lost people. See, during, watch this, during peaceful times, lost people seem calm, and they don't be, but during difficult times, lost people turn up. Come on, somebody. They've been turning up. They've been acting a plum fool. Can I get an amen? They've been proving that they need some salvation real bad. And guess what? We have it. And God has given us the responsibility of providing salvation to those that are lost. Now, in order for us to do that, we can't get sidetracked by their lostness and we start tripping. We have to stay focused. We Come on, somebody. We have to stay focused and stay true to who we are so that we can provide light in a dark situation. We can't respond to darkness with darkness. We have to stay focused on being who God has called us to be. The world needs us to be who God has called us to be. Anybody know I'm right about it? Come on, somebody. And the world needs us to do what God has called us to do. He's called us to get lost people saved. He's called us after that to use the word of God to defeat their sinful challenges. And then he's called us to develop thousands of spiritual champions. In other words, God wants us to build a spiritual army that is equipped and developed to do the work that God has called us to do. And how important is that in these difficult times? Oh, y'all getting it? All right. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Now, our motivation for all of that is that, and what God is saying, if we're going to do that, we have to be faithful. We have to remember the covenant. We have to be more obedient. We have to be more disciplined. We, we can't, you know, as a church, we love to use the term, oh, we just keep it real. And so a lot of times that just means we just keep it real simple. We can't, we can't do that. It's time for us as God's people to focus on being holy like our God is holy. Because it's our obedience and discipline and commitment to the word, not just knowing the word, 
but our commitment to practicing the word that's going to prepare us and equip us and anoint us to do what God has called us to do. Anybody know I'm right about it? Hallelujah. And our motivation for being faithful to God is that he's been so faithful to us. Has anybody testimony? Has he been faithful to you? He's been better to us than we deserve. So this is what God put on my heart. And because uh, what Moses was doing is having really a covenant renewal ceremony to say, listen, we already know what the covenant is, but now preparing you for when you get into the promised land, once you get there, you need to have a renewal of the covenant that you've committed to God. And God put that on my heart for us as a church. At the end of the message today, we're going to pray and all of us make a commitment to the covenant that we made with God. And the, and the commitment to the vision that God has given us as a church because it's time to get it done in 2021. We spent this much time getting here, but we're here now. Don't get sidetracked by all the nice stuff. Let's get it done in 2021. Let's give God a hand clap for you. All right. All right, let's go. Verses 1 through 6. I got a long way to go. And so I'm going to preach fast, read fast. Y'all listen fast. Y'all ready? Verse 20, uh, 1 through 6. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All the blessings will come on you. How many? All these blessings will come on you and accompany you. Oh, they go with you. If you obey the Lord, you have to obey him. Verse 3, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your baskets and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Amen. Uh, the first point God put on my heart to share with you uh, this morning is the vision depends on faithfulness. The vision depends on faithfulness. So God has given us a great vision, and with the vision, God has made us some promises that he'll bless us as we fulfill the vision. In other words, um, when God gives the vision, he'll always give the provision. He says that if we are committed to being faithful to the vision, he's committed to giving the provision. And he's already proven that true because we're standing in his provision. And we didn't have the people, we didn't have the resources. Everybody said we couldn't do it. But too late, we all had enough faith, we're already here. But it's God, and even in, come on somebody, even in the height of COVID-19, God still blessed us, proving that he is a provider. But now we're here, don't get sidetracked, stay focused on the vision, it took faithfulness to get us here, but it's going to take more faithfulness to be who God has called us to be in this place. Amen. Now, for the key membership, we have a unique membership because we have an unusually smart congregation. We have an unusually educated congregation. We have a well-experienced congregation. We have talented members, but God said, don't get it twisted. None of that got us here. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Don't, don't get beside yourself. We know you're smart. We know you're talented. We know you're experienced. Come on, somebody. We know you're blessed and all of that, but none of that got us here. The, the single thing that got us here was our faithfulness and obedience to the Lord. In other words, your success, what God has wanted me to help you to understand, your success is so much more spiritual than it is practical. And we think that if we get all the practical stuff, and, and this I'm preaching to some of my pastor friends and, and, some of my, 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 and, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ, we think that it's our practical success that will guarantee our life success, and it's not true. God is able to do far more for you than you're able to do for yourself. You can have all the degrees, you can be charismatic, you can have everything that the world says you ought to have and not do anything worthwhile for the kingdom of God. 
The only thing that will make sure and guarantee that you're effective for the kingdom and effective to bless this world is your faithfulness and obedience to God. Because once God, see, it's your faithfulness that determines that God will put his hand on you. And once God's hand is on you, it's a guarantee that your work will work. Anybody here want your work to work? Come on, somebody. Anybody in here tired of working and then not working out? You putting in all the effort and all the exercise and never uh, uh, proceeding forward, never achieving anything. And then you surrender yourself to God and determine, I'm going to obey him and follow him. Whatever he says, I'm going to do it. Wherever he tells me to go, I'm going to go. Whatever he tells me to say, I'm going to say. Whatever he tells me to stand up for, no matter what the opposition, I'm going to stand up for it. I'm not going to fear. I'm going to trust God. And once you decide to do that, God just started blessing you, opening up doors that you didn't even know existed. Come on, somebody. Sending people your way, adding people to the family and to the team. God has given us, as the key church, a great vision, but we have to be committed to being obedient and faithful for him to bring the vision to fruition through us. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for that. And if, you, if you're committed to it, give God a hand clap of praise for that. Now, simple thought is your obedience releases his blessing. And your disobedience releases his curse. Because that's the other part of this. So if you start at verse 15 and start keep on reading, the first thing that he talked about was the blessings. If they obeyed the covenant, then he talked about all the many curses that would come on them if they disobeyed. It's not rocket science, y'all. It's pretty simple. Sometimes we make life harder than it really needs to be. Because we think we're so smart. We think we're smarter than God and we could figure some different things out or we got a little way we can manipulate things or we got friends and influence. We try to do all the practical things. We get the degrees. We get the influence. We get the connections. We do all of that. You cannot manipulate kingdom success. Can I get an amen? All you can do is surrender yourself to God. Let him put his hand on it and bless you. And then he can bless you with uh, 12 acres of land, an alliance, and a multi-million dollar building with a small congregation, proving to the world that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. We're not, we smart, but we're not that smart. There's not that many of us. We didn't have that much money. We are simple proof that God is able to do amazing, miraculous things. But I guarantee you, it came out of our faith and obedience. It got us here, but where we're going is going to require greater faithfulness and greater obedience. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, watch this. He says in the text, I got to move on. He, one of the blessings is, if we're obedient, is that he'll bless us in the house and bless us in the field. He'll bless us in the city and he'll bless us in the field. Anybody know him right about it? In other words, what God is saying is that because of our obedience, and I'm just going to already commit to it, we're going to be obedient. Uh, it, it, it's really an if, but I'm sure that we're going to do it. Can I get an amen? Now, when we are obedient, God is going to bless us, and watch this, and the blessing on the key church is going to be so amazing, it's going to cover those in the city and those in the field. All right, all right, all right. This is the way God gave it. It's going to be so blessed that it's relevant to everybody across the board. The key is so blessed that the key can bless doctors and dope addicts at the same time. Uh, Y'all not ready, y'all not ready. Um, 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 God can bless you here at the key whether you're a business owner or a bus driver. It's something relevant for you. Like if you're a business owner, he, he got something for you that can bless you. But if you're a bus driver, you're relevant too because we need somebody to drive the bus. Can I get an amen? But God can bless you too. God can bless. He can cover the gamut. He can, he can get those that are high. He can get those that are educated, those that are uneducated. Those that are uneducated at the key, he can help you get educated. Can I get an amen? If you don't have a job, somebody at the key knows somebody got a job to hook you up with a job. Can I get an amen? Like God can bless you all the way across the board. Like God, you're not too smart for what God is doing here at the key. You're not too low for what God is doing at the key. God can bless everybody. God can bless two-parent homes. He can bless single-parent homes. He can bless a mother with five kids. He can bless a two parents with one kid. Like, whatever you got going on, God can bless you. God can bless you if you have a PhD or just a GED. Whatever it is, God got it for you here at the key. <laughs> and nobody tripping. We all one family. Can I get a hallelujah? And Amen. Before I started this church, I passed it in Stop 6, and it's really, really relevant because I was watching the news, 
and they're tearing down the Stop Six projects, capital projects. That's where I passed it for seven years. And one of the old, my old members came to church a couple of Sundays ago, and I saw her, and I got a chance to see her. It was good to see her. And I said, how you doing? She said, I'm doing good. Me and my uh, four kids and 13 grandkids. And I said, oh, Lord. She said, yeah, Pastor. I said, all right, and, uh, and I think her children are 25 and under. She got 13 grandkids. And so I said, oh, and then she said, and I just want to let you know, they all said they come into the key. I said, Lord, we got to get the, we got to get the nursery ready. Can I get an amen? But whether you, we can help you get your GED or we can help you work on your PhD, whatever it is, we got it for you here at the key. God wants to bless those that are in the city, those that are in the field, those that are high, those that are low. God has an anointing and a blessing for you. Whatever level of life you're at, you can get blessed here at the key. Somebody get, and you're welcome. Come on, somebody. You're welcome. Come on, somebody. We love everybody, whether you white or Chinese or you um, from, from Mexico, wherever you're from, we love you here. All y'all welcome. Come on, let's come together. Let's show the world that God can do it. He can unify us to glorify him because whenever diff people of differences come together for one purpose, only God can do that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. He will do it here at the key. Hallelujah. And then he said, watch this, he's going to bless you in the location where you are. So in other words, what God says is that there's going to be such a blessing on this land and property that it will bless whoever comes in and whoever goes out. Like it's impossible to enter into this property. It's just an anointing on this property. Like we're not supposed to be in this location. We're not supposed to have a building this nice. We're not, the, and we sure enough not supposed to have that chandelier in the foyer. Amen. That's just a blessing to you. You just walk in like, oh Lord, I feel better. Can I get an amen? So the chandelier just bring a little joy to your life. But that's what God has. And, and if you think the building, the property is nice, it's the people in the building that's really nice. It's the ministries that God is going to perform that's really, really nice. But what God is saying there's an anointing on the land that he promised us. He promised it to us 20 years ago, and now he's finally brought it to fruition, and because of our faithfulness, and now God is going to use this property to be a blessing to all that enter. When you come in, you'll get joy, and on the way out, you'll get joy, but it's, it, come on, somebody say hallelujah. He's going to bless us coming in, and he's going to bless us going out. He's going to bless us when we get in, and then he's going to bless us to be, make a difference because, like, like, when you go out, you discharge for duty. We're releasing you to start doing the work. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, I, got to, I got to go. Um, church is like the Cowboys game. And there's some things that they do at the game that's more important than any other thing, and uh, there's something they do at the game is more important than catching, is more important than blocking, is more important than cheering, is more important than all that, and that's huddle. They huddle. It must be important because they do it every play. But even though huddling is important, it's still not the object of the game. We don't go to the game to watch them huddle. All we want to know is did you discuss enough in the huddle to help you score them? Because scoring is the object. Can I get an amen? And the comparison is that everything we do inside this building and on this property is so nice, but everything we do in the building is not the object of the game. We do it every week because it's necessary for us to get a plan. It's necessary for us to hear the word of God. It's necessary for us to teach the Bible study and get the members developed. But then we got to break the huddle, leave the building, and then go make a play. We make a play. We score when somebody gets saved. Can I get an amen? So you come to the building to get developed, but then we leave. So you, you bless when you come in because you get developed, but you got to bless you on the way out so you can make a difference. Amen. All right. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at verse 7. We got to move. Uh, let's look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you. Watch this. Y'all ready? The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will, and, and so this is a guarantee. Somebody say it with me, say they will. They will. And, and ain't no might. You, it is impossible for you to do what the Lord has called you to do and not get some enemies. <laughs> come on somebody, anybody know I'm right about it? Yeah. Hallelujah. They will come at you from one direction, but they will flee from you in seven. 
The first point is the, the vision depends on faithfulness. The second is the vision defeats foes. The vision defeats foes. Just your commitment to the vision guarantees that you'll have haters and foes. Part of life. Everybody not going to like you. And matter of fact, the more you do right, the, the more people that probably won't like you. And that's something you just got to get all, be okay with in your mind and your heart. Get your mind right. Can I get an amen? We, we not no popularity contest. We in the business of salvation. Come on, somebody. And the more we do, because the world is getting so crazy and so simple, the more we act holy, the more we preach truth, the more enemies, haters, and foes we will have. But the good thing is that don't get alarmed. Don't worry. All you have to do is be faithful to the vision. Because watch this. The, your faithfulness to the vision will defeat any foe that comes your way. You don't have to worry about fighting foes. See, see people got it twisted. That's why they're tripping now, trying to overtake the Capitol building. You don't have to. We don't have to fight. Our God will fight for you. He said, all you got to do is focus on the vision. And if you're focused on the vision, the vision will defeat the foes because the visionary won't let anybody stop what he's doing. So what guarantees your victory is that you stay focused on his vision. And if you focus on his vision, he'll take the responsibility of keeping you safe. Come on, somebody. And defeating everybody that comes against his vision. So long as you committed to the vision, the vision itself will defeat the foe. They'll, they'll come at you. Come on, somebody. And, and don't, don't get it twisted. They will come. We done had some creative stuff come at us already. People coming here dressing like something else that the guy didn't create them. And, uh, you know, but you got to be careful. All that is a trick. And so we had to talk about it with leadership. How do we handle it? What do we do? Don't think that it's not an attack. People, whenever you standing for the truth and standing for what God has called you to do, you're going to have some opposition and some foes. But you don't focus on fighting them. You just focus on fulfilling the vision, and God will make sure that they, because God, God will never let any created being stop the creator's vision. Somebody say hallelujah. Y'all want some stuff to share on Facebook? There it is. Amen. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Now, don't get it twisted. The only one that would want to stop people from getting saved and stop us from using the word of God to defeat their simple challenges and stop us from developing thousands of spiritual champions is the devil himself. So any foe or anyone that comes against that vision has to be the devil or full of the devil. And no matter how powerful and strong the devil looks, I'm here to tell you, he's not as strong as the God we serve. Greater is he that lives in me than the one that lives in the world. Don't worry about fighting your foe. The, the, the Lord has you. You just focus on the vision, and that's what God has come to do. All that's going on in this world, don't get sidetracked, because you'll be running here and running there. God said, get them saved. That's the only solution. We focus on doing what God has called us to do, and he'll focus on protecting us while we do it. Somebody say hallelujah. Y'all not, not, not acting like y'all excited about that. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, let me give you some foes of the key church vision. Some foes of the key church vision. COVID-19. Been a foe of the vision. If it wasn't no COVID-19, we have thousands of people. We had three services and all of them be packed by now. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Still coming. But COVID-19 fought against what we were trying to do for the Lord in 2020, the end of the year. We got in our church. Am I right about it? Anybody will attest to the fact that COVID-19 has been a foe for your family? It's been challenging? Come on, somebody. Has it been real? But what God is saying is, don't get sidetracked. Don't get dismayed. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't focus on COVID-19. Now, we have to be saved, be wise, but don't get so caught up with it and overwhelmed with it and focused on it. You just focus on doing what God has called you to do, and he'll take care of you. Hadn't he proven that he could take care of us even during COVID-19? 
then we still build our building, we still having church. Come on, somebody, we still worshiping the Lord. God's still paying the bills. God's still paying your bills. God's still feeding you. God has still blessed you even during COVID-19. It has been a challenge. Now, this is what we're going to um, pray to God for. Matter of fact, we're going to claim it in the name of Jesus. It's going to run. COVID-19 got to run back in seven different ways. It got to go. Huh? Can I get an amen? Like, it's been enough. It's done enough. Come on, somebody. But it's got to go. Can I get an amen? Because God is not going to let COVID-19 stand in the way of the key and what he's called us to do. I'm claiming it. We're going to fill up this church with three services before you know it. Can I get an amen? Because God is going to defeat that enemy. We don't have to work it, focus on it. We focus on the vision. God will focus on the foe. All right. Y'all ready for another one? Another foe of the key church, and should be of all God's church, is racism. We don't have time for all that. Only God can prove that he can bring people that are different together for the same purpose and focus. We all are different. We are so diverse in so many ways. We're different racially and educationally and in and, and, and age and, and sexually different. Like, we got males and females. Like, and the devil will use our differences to divide us but God uses our differences to improve us because when we can all come together, everybody brings something different to the table that makes us better. Are you getting it? And so one of the main proofs that God uses to show his power is those that are different having the ability to come together and be united and focused in love and unity. And God is going to do that here at the church. And so don't get it twisted. It's going to come. Racism is going to challenge us fulfilling the vision that God has called us to do. But God is going to use us to defeat it because we're not going to let racism. We're going to bring races together and not let racism have its way. It, it, already, it already tried. Y'all don't even really understand, but it already tried. There's some people that live in this community that don't look like us that started writing petitions to keep the church from happening. But it's, we already here. Can nothing stop God's vision? Can nobody stop it? Can nothing stop? Is anything impossible for God? No. I, I met with the oh, I'm telling too much. Met with the city councilman, and uh, he said, "Boy, you sure are brave." And I said, "Brave? What, what is that?" Somebody tell me, "What are you saying?" But he knew, like, you ain't gonna make it, ain't you? You will not put a church right there, brother. And you sure? And I think being brave was trying to say, "You foolish to think you could pull that off." <laughs> too late. You don't know the God that we serve. God is able. Come on, somebody. We're here. <laughs> and racism and, and all other challenges won't be able to stop what God is doing. Idolatry is a foe to the vision of God that he has at the key. Idolatry. Let me, let me, let me break down to you real quick. What I, I got to move on. What idolatry is. Idolatry is when you prioritize anything else over God. God bless you with a job, but your job is more important than God. That's idolatry. God bless you with a nice car, and you can't even come to church. You got to wash your car and ride around in it. Come on, somebody. That's idolatry. You worship your car more than you do God. God bless you with a beautiful wife, and she's fine, but she ain't that fine. Can I get an amen? Come on. Come on, somebody. She is not God. Like, God blessed you with her because you, you couldn't have got her. It was only God that allowed you to get her in the first place. Can I get in? Oh, y'all playing with me. All right, y'all ain't ready for that. Uh, God blessed you with that wife, but you have placed that wife in priority over God. You love her more than you love God. That's idolatry. God blessed you with them children, but you think them children are the world. The world is hung with them. Can I get an amen? And, and come on, somebody. And God blessed you with them children, but do not put them children over God. God still has to take priority over your children. Watch this. God blessed you with politics, but do not put your politics over God. Some people tripping. They, have, they will throw Jesus under the bus for their politics. Can I get an amen? That is idolatry. And God says, I Idolatry will be a foe to the vision that God has given to the key. But God says, don't get caught up. Don't get sidetracked with idolatry. Stay focused on the vision, and the vision will defeat the foes. Yeah. Greed. I don't, I don't have time to explain them all. That's self-explanatory. Uh, greed is a foe to the vision that God has given us. 
selfishness. It cannot be about you. It's us as a team. It takes teamwork to make this dream work. Uh, anybody know I'm right about it? And pride. We do not have time for pride. That's why our pastor's always been preaching to you, and I try to work it on myself. We always have to work at staying humble, especially when stuff is working. Yeah. Got to fight to stay humble. Let's look at verses 8 through 10. <clears throat> and it says in verse 8, the Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. Somebody say, that's all our ministries. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. See, he's going to bless this land. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he has promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him. Watch this. Then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. Amen. And uh, 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 let me use another word for fear. They will respect you. They may not like you, but they'll have to respect you. Because the anointing of God and the power of God is on your life. We talked about the vision depends on faithfulness. Then we said the vision defeats foes. And the third point God put on my heart to share with you, the vision develops fans. The vision develops fans. The Lord said if you're faithful to him and obedient to him, he will bless the work of your hands. Whatever you put your hands on, God will bless it. Whatever you touch will turn to gold. And God has given us some great ministries that we've already accomplished, but we can even we can accomplish them in an even greater way now with our property. Can I get an amen? Like we've gone to Huddle Touch and we've done all that, but it's been good to go to the school and bless the kids. But how awesome is it now that we have a house that all the kids can come to us? Like it's been good to go and preach to the football team, but eventually we'll have our own football field and we can come and get a whole lot more. Eventually, this will be our first building, but it's not going to be our last building. We're going to build our main sanctuary and this is going to be the gym. Can I get an amen? Like everything that we put our hands to, like just because of COVID-19, what he's saying, don't get sidetracked. Don't stop believing the vision. It's still coming. Whatever we put our hands to, come on somebody, God is going to bless whatever we put our hands to. But you got to have faith because it will never look right. It won't feel right. People won't agree with it. But you got to put faith in what God has told you and keep moving forward. And I'm not down. COVID-19 is not causing me to doubt. Look, it was just a it was a stumbling block. It's not a roadblock. Look, you can jump over a blocker and keep running a touchdown. Anybody know I'm right about it? You can get hit and roll off and keep on running. Oh, that was a that was good. The Lord bless that. Bro, I said, y'all, y'all getting this? Come on, somebody. So God has great things for us, but you just got to stay focused and faithful to the vision. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. So watch this. So once God blesses the work of our hands, what it will do is prove to the world that our hand, that God's hand is on us. Once people see that God's hands is on us, it will make them appreciate us like they didn't before when they really didn't know. Are are y'all getting it? Like, like. God's blessing us will produce fans of us. <clears throat> I'm a lowly homeboy, West Philadelphia born and raised. I uh, had a lot of challenges, made a lot of mistakes. People probably voted me un- most likely not to exceed, succeed. But then I messed around and got saved and messed around and surrendered my life to the Lord. And I worked for American Airlines and a lot of people didn't really think much of me. And even when I started preaching, you know, people doubt you. And, you, and then God has given you this grand vision. You start sharing and people be like, yeah, right. But the problem is I really believe. And so, boom, here we are. Come on, somebody. I was talking to one of my good friends. And he, he loved me, but he was never really convinced about the ministry. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and he worshiping in the union hall up the dirt road like they're not doing nothing over there. Well, we was doing a whole lot. First of all, we got to be doing something to get a whole lot of folk to drive up a dirt road. Can I get an amen? And somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank God no more dirt. Thank God no more dirt. No, we, we, we got our cars dirty for years, didn't we? All right, now watch this. Watch this. But recently he called me. 
And I said, man, it's so good to hear from you, man. And I said, and, and he lived around the corner, and he'd been living up here for the last 20-something years. And so I said, man, you know, we, we, we finished our new church. He said, I know. I said, well, man, you know, you got to come visit. I'm coming. I said, you coming, man? Like, you know, because I didn't know how he feel. He was never impressed. And this is what he said. He said, if anybody can pull off what y'all pulled off, God's hand is on that. Oh, y'all, y'all not playing. When God bless your hands, it'll produce fans. Anybody know I'm right about it? All right, watch this, watch this. We, we closed on the building around August, and then we had our first service in September. Before we finished the building, I had 800 friends. I'm telling you the truth. I had 800 friends on Facebook. Once we closed, now I'm at 3,000 in four months. I'm telling you what I know. Like every day, y'all, y'all playing with me. Every day, 20 or 30 friend requests. Every day. Every day. Because God has a way of elevating you. See, watch this. If you push yourself low, he'll lift you up high. If you lift up yourself, then he'll humble you. And whoever God raises up can't nobody bring down. But God has a way of blessing you that when God blesses you, everybody wants to be near you. Everybody wants to be connected to you. Watch this. Your faithfulness, when God blesses your hands, then it will produce fans. He said everybody around the world will see that God's hand is on your life. He's going to make it obvious to everybody. Come on, somebody. One of my best friends called me. He said, man, how y'all do that in eight years? Y'all started from scratch and y'all built all that in eight years? I said, yes. How y'all do it? Faithfulness. Like, I can't give you no, I can't give you no game plan. We, we didn't do it. God did it. We were incapable of doing it, but God is able to even use us. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Now, with all that being said, he'll give us fans. Watch this. And he'll give us fans because of our reputation. So has anybody ever discovered that people and churches and all organizations have some type of reputation? But he says, this is the reputation that he wants to produce for us if we are faithful and obedient to him. He wants our reputation to be a holy people. Yeah. Yeah. Are they blessed because they're so educated? No. Are they blessed because they're in the right location? We are in a good location, but it's our faithfulness that God is here. Can I get an amen? No, 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 no. God is blessing them because they're holy. Like, like, you could do all the stuff that's practical, but there's nothing you could do more powerful than just obeying and trusting God. Like, if God can trust you, he can use you. If you trust him greatly, he can use you greatly. That's the simple formula, and God is doing it so he can use us to prove to others that he, is not, he doesn't have favoritism with people. It's the same plan for everybody. The more holy you are, the more God can bless you. It's time out for playing. It's time out for games. God has brought us here. Now we're here. It's time to go to another level and get it done in 2021. Time to raise up our faithfulness to God, our obedience to God, because God wants to bless us, and God's going to bless our hands and give us fans, but he's going to prove to everybody, allow them to see that he blessed us because of our holiness and our obedience. And I know those are not popular words in these days and times. Don't nobody talk about being holy no more. We need to be obedient to God. I don't care what everybody else is saying. Everybody losing their mind. Taking off all their clothes and tripping. Everybody just losing their mind. They just don't have no more rules or regulations. Well, that's on them. I'm going to trust God and do what he called me to do. Can I get an amen? I'm not going to make an excuse for it. I love you, but I'm like, I'm not going with you down there. Can I get an amen? I'm not doing that with you. I'm not doing that. God has been too good to me. God has brought me a mighty long way. The least I can do is be faithful and obedient to him. And God will set you up. God will give you a reputation. God will make people want to be connected to you. Anybody, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thousands of people, I'm claiming it, who want to be a part of the miracle that God is producing here at the key. And, want, and, and some of them would just uh, be excited about us and thank God for us, but some of them want to be connected. Thousands of people want to be connected to what God is doing. 
because God can bless you whether you're in the city or whether you're in the field. God can bless you whether you have a PhD or a GED. Everybody wants to be a part of somewhere that they could be blessed. And, and people want to be a part of something with a good reputation. Amen. People tired, time out, people just tired of all of the games. Hey, are you, anybody know I'm right about it? People looking for something with integrity. And we need to provide that for them here. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. But we're serious about our faithfulness and obedience to God. Anybody ready to be serious? Come on, everybody. COVID-19, look, time is too short. We don't, none of us know how long we're going to be here. I want to do as much for the Lord as I possibly can. But I've come to discover the formula for me being effective to God is my obedience and faithfulness. Not my skill set, not my ability, not 29 degrees, not connections, not relationships and all of them, hookups, all that. All that is okay. But when God put his hand on it, can't nobody stop it. Anybody know I'm right? But when God decides he's going to bless you, you're just going to be blessed. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And God blesses obedience and faithfulness. That's all Moses is trying to help him to know. If you'll be obedient, God is going to bless you. All right, let's get the last part. We out. Verse 13 and 14, we out. Y'all ready? In verse 13, it says, <clears throat> let's read 12. Let's read verse 12. The Lord will, let's read 11 and 12, I'm sorry. I got the roll. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb and the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground and in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open up the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty and to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. The vision develops families and finances. Fourth point, the vision develops families and finances. So basically what he said is that if you focus on the vision, God will send the provision. But he'll send the provision so much, he'll bless you abundantly. Like he won't just bless you with necessity, he'll bless you abundantly. Like God can bless you with what you need, but then God is able to bless you with more than you need. Like God wants to give you enough joy that even when you're grieving, you still got enough joy left over. You can bless somebody. Like it's a trip that you're the one going through, but you can encourage somebody while you're going through. Because God didn't just give you enough joy. He gave you an abundance of joy. So you got some left over. You got enough to fulfill what you need, but you got some to share with somebody else. Somebody say hallelujah. Anybody know I'm right about it? God can bless you abundantly. But he says two ways that he wants to bless you abundantly. He wants to bless your family and your finances. So he said he'll bless the fruit of your womb. Like, in other words, God wants to bless your kids. Like, there is no greater blessing to a parent than when God bless your kids. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Anybody want their kids to be blessed? Anybody want your kids to be anointed? Anybody want your kids to do great things for the Lord? Anybody want your kids to be able to be used by God to do great things? God said if you're faithful to him, he will bless your family. I'm just going to do it. He'll bless the marriage family. He'll bless the single parent family. He'll bless the kids of the family. God says if you're faithful, he'll bless your family. But not only will he bless your family, he'll bless your finances. He said he will open up the window of heaven and pour, not, not dribble out, not sprinkle off. He'll pour out a blessing for you that you don't don't even have room enough to receive. In other words, he's going to give us more finances than we need. Like, come on, somebody. Anybody know I'm right about it? God said he will bless your finances. He's going to bless the finances of the key so much. He said he's going to bless us so much if we're faithful. We're in the building now. We took faith to get us here, but then it's going to be a different kind of faithfulness now we're here because God is going to change our status. God is going to bless us with so much finance. He's going to change our status because we're going to go from being borrowers to lenders. Right now we borrow, but that's the stage he had us in. He had to, we had to have the faith of pushing to get to where we needed to go, even though we didn't have any money. And thank God for those that wanted to lend us some money, and we're thankful for that. But God said now is the season where if we're faithful in 2021, he's going to bless us. Will he change our status? We'll go from borrowing to lending. Like we'll have more money than we need, and we'll have some that we can bless others with what they need. Anybody here want to be a blessing to others? Say, you can only bless folk if you have something to bless them with. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, last point, and we out. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. We out. All right, and it says in verse 13, thank you for your patience. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. 
if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God, if you obey him, that I will give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Don't turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. We talked about the vision depends on faithfulness. The vision defeats foes. The vision develops fans. The vision develops families and finances. But the vision decides the future. So God has already decided in his vision for us what he wants us to be in the future. But it's up to us to believe it to get there. Like everything that he told us up to this point, it looked impossible. And if you were just operating in the natural, we would have never thought that we could get here. I mean, now we're here, it just don't seem that bad. But you, don't, you wasn't on the other side, we were trying to figure out how to get here. Like four years ago, it was no room in the end. Like, like we was just like, we can't stay in alliance. It is just too expensive. Land on 35 is a million dollars an acre, and we need a whole lot of them. We just can't stay. We've grown this church, and we've been renting, and we cannot permanently get in. We're just going to have to go somewhere else, but we can't get in the lines. And God was saying, no, that's not what I told you. And what he, I needed to understand is that 20 years ago, when he gave me the vision, he already had this land set it aside, and it was dependent upon me being faithful. But because I was faithful, God, that what he had set aside for us, he provided for us, and now we are here. So but going forward, it's some other stuff he's calling us to do that is greater than what we can perceive in our minds, but we can't doubt then either. Matter of fact, it's going to require greater faith because it's the next step. Are y'all getting this? And so what God is saying is that what we need to understand, God is calling us to be the head and not the tail. Now, with all of that comes great responsibility. It's a challenge being the head of something. It's a challenge being a leader. It's a challenge being the biggest it's, or one of the biggest. It's a challenge doing all of that because with all that comes great responsibility. Anybody know I'm right about it? Hallelujah. He said we, 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 we won't, we'll be the head and not the tail. We won't be on the bottom. We're going to be at the top. And the reason that God wants to do that for us is because he knows that we're faithful enough not to give, take the credit, but to always give him the credit and say, listen, it's not because of our skill set. It's not because of any of that stuff that we have. It's because of our faithfulness. God did it. And if you trust him, he can do it for you. Somebody say hallelujah. Do y'all believe? Are y'all scared? Y'all ready to do everything God called us to do? Football fields, gymnasiums, uh, 10, 10 schools in huddle touch. That, this is what God, the vision God gave me. Thousands of kids in youth conferences, folk getting saved all over face, changing family, just, just tearing up. And, and God said he going to bless this land that we own, bless everybody that comes on the land. But if we're not done, we, he going to add to the land. I, that's just, I just throw that out there. He not done. We're going to get some more. Come on, somebody. We're taking over. Somebody say hallelujah in Jesus' name. But we're going to make sure we give him all the glory. It's not about us. It's going to be great responsibility. But he said he has not determined for the key church to be the tail, but to be the head. Not to be on the bottom, but to be on the top. Not to be on the top to brag about being on the top, but to be on the top so that we can be in a position to be a blessing to all others and to demonstrate to them what obedience and faith will do for you. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for where you brought us from. Thank you for your word. Thank you for making us have a commitment to get it done in 2021. You've given us a vision, and in 2020, you brought us here. But in now, in 2021, it's time to get after what you called us to do. Time to focus on being what you called us to be. The world needs us to step into the position that you've already decided for us to be in so that we can love people in an amazing way, that we can teach the Bible in an amazing way. Help us to not get sidetracked by all of the foes, by COVID-19, by social injustice, by racism, by anything that would try to block what you called us to do. But as we focus on your vision, we'll understand that the vision itself will defeat the foes, that you'll put a, such an anointing on our church that it will produce fans, 
people who want to be connected to us, people who want to join us. But help us to stay humble and to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We praise you in advance for what you're about to do. With every head bowed and eye closed in the house and online. This is a time of recommitment to the covenant that we have with the Lord and our commitment to the vision that he's given us as a church. And even though we may not all be able to worship in the house and you don't feel comfortable, you worship it online, worship it online does not give us an excuse to hold back. We can't let COVID keep us from being who God has called us to be. God will defeat the foe. We just got to stay focused on the vision. But all of us, stay focused and faithful on prayer meetings. Stay focused and faithful on worshiping online. Stay focused and faithful to the ministries that you're in. Don't give up. Don't get dismayed. Don't fall out. Don't pass out. Stay focused and stay faithful because God has great things for us. Let's pray. Merciful Father, I just pray over the entire congregation of the key. To those you're going to add to the key that today we are making a commitment to the covenant that you've given us. That Now we have reached the promised land that we won't get sidetracked, but we'll be more focused on what you call us to do, more committed, more obedient to you so that we can be blessed by you and we can be used by you in a great way. Just bless all of our membership, increase our membership, help us to have faith, help us to not doubt, even though so many things that want to cause doubt in our lives, help us to not go for it, to stay focused on you, keep the faith, believing that what you have for us is for us, that we'll be everything that you've called us to be and we'll do everything that you called us to do. And we claim it in Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed, eyes closed. If there's somebody here today and you're not sure that you are saved, the Bible says that the day is the day of salvation. If you're in the house and you're not saved, just raise your hand. Pastor, I'm really not sure I'm going to heaven, but I want to get it right. Really not sure, but I want to get it right. Listen, our days are short. Yesterday is already gone. Can't get it back. Tomorrow's not promised. All right, did I see a hand? Did I see a hand? If I see a hand, come this way. Don't be scared. Come on. If I see the hand, come on. If I see the hand. Hallelujah. All right. All right. If you need to get it right. Okay. God is good. But don't let things distract you. The day is the day of salvation. And we know life is short. This may be the last opportunity we had to get it right with the Lord. Anybody? Anybody in the house? Anybody in the house? Okay. All right. This is, all, this is real. All right. God is good. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. If you are worshiping with us online and you are not sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven. Um, the Bible says that the day is the day of salvation. The Bible says over in Romans 10 and 9, that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so all you have to do is make a commitment to him, verbally pray and talk to him and surrender your life to him. But if you're sincere with him and you repeat after me, you can be saved today. And so this is what I want you to do. Bow your head even online, and this is what you need to say. Say, dear Father, Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. And Lord, I promise to do my best to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me right now. If that was your prayer, and if you were sincere, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. And if you gave your life to the Lord or you want to join the Key Church, uh, we ask that you will go on to our website and you can look for I Am New. And then under there, you can look for Get Connected. Send us a message and say, I gave my life to the Lord or I want to join the Key Church. Somebody will call you back and get you connected. And we thank you uh, for worshiping with us on today. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for those. We've had people uh, give their life to the Lord online and join the church online. What a miraculous time. All right. If you're in the house, you may know that you're saved, but you don't have a church home that's conducive for your growth. So we want to open up the doors of the church and invite you to join. Anybody want to join? Doors of the church are open. Anybody want to join? Hallelujah. 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 God is good. All right. All right. God is good all the time. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? We got a whole family. A whole family. Hallelujah. Welcome to the key. Welcome to the key. Hallelujah. All 
right. Deacon Cagney, a lot of got married, and his family said they're coming down to join officially. Hey, Amen. Won't he do it? All right. God bless you. Um, y'all can stay right there. We want to welcome y'all to the key with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities. You can see Deacon Theo, and he will get your information. Let's give God a hand clap of praise every week. Somebody, every week. It's amazing. Even during COVID-19, every week, somebody joins the key church. God is uh, fulfilling what he has promised. What an awesome, awesome God that we serve. All right. If you want to be a blessing uh, to the key church, again, if you're in-house, you can give by filling out the envelopes that are on each side at each exit. And, uh, and if you're online, you can download an app called Giblify and then look for the key church to see my picture and you can put your credit or debit card information into that secure account. And once you do that and set it, you never have to set it again, given it becomes convenient. If you uh, don't feel comfortable giving online, you can mail your offering into the key church PO box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. And uh, remember FYI uh, that we will be celebrating the home going of our brother and uh, we are excited we want to continue to pray for his wife joanne that is here uh, so brothers shelby's funeral will be this friday january the 22nd 11 o'clock a.m right here at the church so we invite you if you are off or you're not working or you could take off and you want to come celebrate our brother they have been faithful to our church brother shelby was faithful to sing in our choir and faithful to our church. And so we want to celebrate a life well lived. And we'll do that here at the church. So we'll see you there. God bless you. Have a good day. All right, time for our benediction. Good morning, the key. Wow, that was such a powerful message for Pastor. You know, the world right now is such disarray, um, and it's difficult to tell the difference between Christians and non-Christians based upon their reaction to stress. And Pastor hit around the nail. God requires us to be obedient, not perfect. And we just be obedient to his commands. The blessings will just come. We all stand for the prayer. And also to let everybody know, tomorrow is a holiday, so there will be no Monday school. So just kind of schedule that accordingly. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day that you allow us to come together in your house to be able to glorify you and worship you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the message that you sent through our pastor to us to help, conduct, help us conduct ourselves, Father God, in such a manner that glorifies you and further pushes your vision, Father God, that everybody will be introduced to Jesus Christ. Father God, as we leave this building today, Father God, I pray for safe travel for everyone and everyone's family who's connected to this church. Father God, for everyone out there who is struggling with their salvation and their understanding of Christ, Father God, I pray that this message will help further that process, Lord, and will help them fully understand who they are in Christ. Father God, we pray for the lo our lost loved ones, Father God, and we pray that anyone who is struggling right now with COVID-19, either spiritually, mentally, physically, or financially, Lord, we pray, that you, we pray that you put a cover over them, Father God, and protect them and give them strength through the whole entire process. We give you all the honor and the glory. We say it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all are dismissed. Just follow the uh, ushers to the exits. Thank you. <laughs>